Welcome to the summer of cane juice. For the next two months, running up roughly to the end of August, maybe even September, I'm gonna be focusing on rums made from nothing but cane juice. Now, before we start that, we need to go right back to basics because I know a lot of you are gonna be, well, hang on a minute, what's the difference between cane juice rums and molasses rums? And fear not, that's what I'm gonna discuss in this video. It's actually pretty easy, but to give you like a rough landscape, 90% of the rums I've got behind me right now are actually molasses based rums. If you ignore that corner there and actually kind of Barcello, I'll talk about Barcello a bit later, but most of the other rums there are made from molasses. But there is a big community of rums actually made from cane juice. And I'm gonna be using the next two months to kind of shine a light and focus on those rums. They're new to me, I've been playing about for the last couple of months. I've been cane juice in training, and I have to say, I'm quite enjoying it. So come on then, let's get to basics. What exactly is the difference between cane juice rums and molasses rums? So to kind of dumb it right down, I'm actually gonna start in molasses rums because that's what most of you kind of know. So let me set the scene. Molasses rums, uh, the kind of, they grow, obviously it comes from sugar cane growing regions. So wherever they grow sugar cane, that sugar cane gets harvested and then it gets sent off to sugar mills. It'll kind of get processed, it'll get juiced and then it'll get boiled to make our sugar. Now when it gets boiled, uh, there's kind of two byproducts that come there. Obviously the boiling kind of evaporates, you get the crystals. The crystals, the sugar crystals, are kind of what we know as granulated sugar or caster sugar. I don't actually know how that translates in the US, but I'm just going to call it granulated sugar uh, because that's what how we know it in the UK powdered sugar made it baby but that's kind of the crystals but actually the other byproducts from making sugar is that kind of thick brown sort of dark gooey substance kind of treacly substance and that is molasses now of course the whole planet has got a massive sugar fetish so the amount of sugar that's produced is colossus so of course when we're doing that there's no other way you can make sugar so effectively, there is an abundance of molasses and there's not much you can actually do with molasses. Kind of lower grade molasses might get fed to cattle, to horses, to, to animals essentially, but the higher grade stuff, not so much. So what exactly happens to that? Well, rum. Rum is produced from all that byproduct of sugar. Now that is dumbing it right down, but that is essentially the nitty gritty of kind of most of the rums out there, the molasses rums. But why sugar cane juice rums? Now, traditionally speaking, we kind of need to look at French origin countries, islands like Martinique, Guadeloupe, those kind of places. We're gonna deep dive into all this over the month, but you kind of have to look at that. When they grow sugar cane, they don't, you know, they, they, because there is an abundance of molasses and kind of, you know, sugar in the world, they actually focus on growing sugar cane specifically for rum. So they don't need the molasses. So what they do is they grow their sugar cane and they get into all the kind of technicals with actually growing the best possible sugar cane. But that essentially just goes to sugar, sugar mills where it gets pressed and juiced. And then that juice is then fermented and then distilled. So as opposed to molasses being fermented and distilled, the juice from the sugar cane is distilled or fermented first and then distilled. Now that, boys and girls, creates a very different base rum to molasses rums. If you're drinking white unaged agricole or cane juice rums, you will easily tell the difference between a sort of white a unaged molasses rum. Now I have tried a lot of unaged molasses rums. That's probably the sort of wider area that I've been kind of down in my previous sort of rum journey. I've had a fair bit of that. It's been a love hate. I've loved some. I've not. I've disliked a lot. What I'm looking at, or what I'm sort of hoping to kind of get from this little journey for me specifically, is actually those kind of aged rums. Now remember, this my whole channel is focusing on rums under £50, $60, 60 euros. So we're not going into the realms of the more expensive stuff. But my whole point being is, would I be able to tell a cane juice rum, a, a sort of six and eight year old cane juice rum to a molasses rum? I'm not overly convinced I would do at this precise moment. I might pick sort of two or three out of 10, but I'm pretty sure that I would not get 10 out of 10 if you kind of gave me a test in that. So I'm looking to go down this journey to kind of see how um, 
I will kind of, I will explain how white unaged agricole or cane juice is very different to molasses when we do those sort of videos. But I'm actually more intrigued about the aged stuff. So all that content is going to be rocking out right here on this channel and uh, on large, the Steve DeBarman Rum Reviews channel. We will dedicate a little bit of time on Steve DeBarman Extra, but I have got other content to rock out there as well. But one of the first myths I'm going to bust is actually agricole myth. And I've already dropped it a couple of times in this video. Not all sugarcane juice rum is agricole. Now, if you want to find out all about that, you better watch the next video in this series because it's dropping right here on this channel. And the first country, the first island we're going to be talking about, Martinique. And I warn you, you need your seatbelts and a pen and paper because this one is going to get technical.